My name is Claire, I'm the founder of Student RDH and Dental Toaster C courses. Today again, we have Amber Auger. She's awesome. She's awesome because she is so open. She's going to share with us everything she knows about when you graduate, what are the hurdles, how you can overcome them, and uh, some real money talk. The reason I'm really thankful is because nobody actually wants to do a money talk. Everybody <laughs> wants to just talk about how to be the best clinician, you know, all of that. Nobody's opened enough to talk mm -hmm. about this really important topic. So I think that's why I'm really excited to have her. Amber, thank you. You're welcome. I'm so, right. excited. so excited. <laughs> We're good friends as well. <laughs> Okay, so Amber, walk us a little bit through your journey from sure. when you graduated and you started to do all your speaking and all mm -hmm. that. Sure. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, in the sixth grade, I decided that I wanted to go and become, originally I wanted to become a dentist. And very quickly I found out how expensive school really was. And I grew up with a single mom. I didn't have a co-signer for a loan. So for me to really start to go down the dental field, I chose dental hygiene. Um, by the time I was a senior in high school, I had a hard time with um, having money to be able to pay for the first year of school. So what I did is I started to work more hours as a uh, waitress. So with that waitressing, what I did is I learned very quickly that if you want to make really great money while waitressing, your food has to come out warm. And your food, if you can have, if you have large tables, yeah. if you can get all the food out at the same time, yeah. you're going to make more money. Yeah. So I would load up that big tray over to an Italian restaurant and probably 100, 150 pound trays were not out of the ordinary. Ooh. And what I did was I put that tray right up my scalar hand, and, you know, lifted it up and pushed oh through God. the doors of the kitchen and <laughs> delivered food. And I had carpal tunnel by the time I was a senior in high school to the point where I'd sleep with my hand hanging over the bed in a bucket oh of ice God. trying to fall asleep every day. So my senior year, I actually had my first cortisone shot. And, um, you know, the school told me, you know, are you sure that you want to be a dental hygienist? You're, you right. know, you already have carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. You know, you've had cortisone. You're very high risk. Are you sure you want to do this and go down this profession? And for me, I knew it was a, a profession that I did want to go down to and go go into, I should say. And um, I decided to pursue the profession, and I've never been happier that I did. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the how I got into speaking was simply that I knew for me with my wrist mm -hmm. clinical hygiene you know, five days a week, full time, it wouldn't be possible for me for 30, 40 years. Right. So that's why I diversified. So when I was in school, I did get my bachelor's degree in, in dental hygiene, and then I went on to get a master's degree. Awesome. Wow. So you continued, and then now, fast forward, mm -hmm. how, how many years has it been since you've been about 10 years. 10 Crazy. years, okay. It flies fast. by, yeah. but about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, Amber is an international speaker. Mm -hmm. Con continuously writing, researching, mm -hmm. creating your own businesses as well. Yes. Opinion leader for major companies that we know, including... Including well. everyone from Sunstar <laughs> yeah. to Pulp Dent to Voco yeah. to Crown Seating. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So lots of, lots of companies, um, closest, Florida Probe, yeah. that um, believe in me and what I do. Yeah. And it's an honor and a privilege mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. represent companies when I'm on the podium. Great. And I'm really lucky to have her today because she travels nonstop speaking. I mean, everybody wants Amber to speak for their dental hygiene conference, for their dental study group, all of that. So to catch her here with a few hours in Boston is amazing. Yes. So Excited thank to explore you. Explore with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so the reason why I mean I talked to Amber about this before, and money is something we all really struggle with because mm -hmm. a lot of us had debt. You know, that could be a small amount of debt when mm -hmm. you graduate school, or a large amount of debt. You know, if for example I graduate for South School of Dental Hygiene, that's a private school. Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly how much tuition was, but it was not little, mm -hmm. right? Right. And you know, we come out. I don't know, maybe having even a hundred k, if you had undergrad debt as well, mm -hmm. and you need to start paying it off so you can really just get that burden out of your shoulder. Right. So I know Amber had some great tips. That's why she's here today. Yeah. How All right. To share that. Yeah. I know. I yes. Know. So when I graduated um, hygiene school, I had about ninety thousand dollars in debt. And that number was very scary, again, especially because I've never really had a safety net. I've never really had, you know, uh, family members who could bail me out if I needed to be bailed out of anything. So um, what I did is 
Throughout hygiene school, my sophomore year of hygiene school, I took a course called Dave Ramsey Financial Peace Ooh. University. I highly recommend it. Wow. And what Dave does is he talks about strategies to pay off your debt, mm -hmm. and that's really what I use as my basis to mm -hmm. help me my foundation for paying off my debt. So again, sorry, D D Dave, Dave Ramsey. Ramsey. He also has a podcast, but the Financial Peace University okay. is a four, I think it's a four to six week course okay. that you go to once a week. Um, and I did that in during school okay. and that was huge huge for me I see, I see. so yeah Dave Ramsey I know him just because he's on TV like mm -hmm. he's really really famous gives awesome advice on mm -hmm. IR I mean IRA to 401k or anything but I didn't know that he did student loans as well like helps the students understand how they should mm -hmm. be financially responsible right awesome so advice. essentially it was mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily student based it was all financial based mm -hmm. but I took those same um, those same what am I trying to say um, yeah, fundamentals like yes what you learned. The, exactly I, I took it out of its context and put it directly for me for um, student loans and it helped so what he talks about is the snowball effect and paying off your student loan the smallest one first and that creates a snowball effect where once you pay that one off then you can go to the next one where a lot of us are taught to pay off the biggest one first but if you pay down the smallest one first Essentially what happens is you're building your credit score as you do that. Mm -hmm. So your credit score is going to be higher if you're building that off, mm -hmm. paying a loan off. Okay. So start with the um, smallest one first. I see. Mm -hmm. How does credit, um, um, sorry, credit history or credit score important here in this context of student loans? So does that mm -hmm. help anybody pay off the next one or get something else, another mm -hmm. loan? Yes. So. Keeping a high credit score is extremely important if you're looking to buy a new car, a new house, if you're looking to have lower interest rates on any credit cards that you want to do. Um, so essentially with um, the importance of that credit score is it's really your future. So if you can build it when you're younger, it's going to help you so much more when you're older. So for me, for instance, um, when I turned um, 30, I had an 806 credit score mm. and it only goes up to 850. So to think about how hard I worked as wow. a 30 year old to have that 806 credit score, yes. Now it's gone down. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason it went down is actually something you have to be careful of too. So my credit score dropped about 40 points when I paid my car off. And I thought that I was doing something smart by paying my car off because I'm in the process of looking at a condo and if I had lesser loans, my condo rate would be lower. But it's taken me too long to get that loan with the condo so it dropped. So when you're talking about loans, they also look at diversity of your loan. So if you have student loans, if you have a car loan, and if you have, you know, another sort of loan, those all come together. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yes. So pay off your small loan, whatever that is first, first. and then mm -hmm. build up your credit score. And also I think it builds confidence. It I does. I think in like in all those financial talks, people, you know, coaches like Susie Orman, she always talks about how you pay the smaller one first. So you know, you can do the next one. It's like going to the gym and do a little bit like at a time. Right. So, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So Amber, how long did it take you to to pay off? You know, mm -hmm. and thank you very much for sharing a real number. Oh, absolutely. So when I graduated school, again around ninety thousand mm -hmm. um, that I graduated with, it took me three years to pay that off. Wow. Yes. So what I did is I started with making huge sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So while other friends of mine were going on vacations and nice. were, you know, going out to the bars mm -hmm. and having a couple cocktails every night or eating out three or four times a week, mm -hmm. I was the person bringing my lunch to work every day, mm -hmm. making sure that, you know, if I went out, it was a calculated cost. Did I really need another glass of wine mm -hmm. or was I okay with one? Mm -hmm. um, and having a set budget, one that you can see. Mm -hmm. So what I love to use is mint.com mm -hmm. and mint.com com is 100% free and essentially how that works is you set it up all your accounts everything from your student loans to your bank accounts your credit cards 100% safe and if when I swiped my card let's say I went to Starbucks and I swipe my card and it's paid three dollars for my Starbucks it would take that three dollars out of my budget for coffee I see. so then from there it would say okay Amber you know you have seven dollars left for your coffee in the whole month if I got close to going over that budget, that $10 budget that I had set for Starbucks, it sends you a warning email. 
so I always knew exactly where each dollar was going. Mm. Once you learn where each dollar is going, mm. that's where the empowerment really comes in. Because yeah. you don't realize that you just spent seventy dollars at TJ Maxx, forty dollars at DSW, it's so easy. and you know it's so easy. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, yeah. you know, and as a hygienist, you're able to make a really good income. Mm -hmm. But you have to be a good steward of that income so that you can set yourself up for the future. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mint.com, is that a tool that helps you budget and track numbers or does that also allocate a certain type of money like directly through the bank account? So it's not necessarily going to allocate direct money, okay. um, but what it's going to do is it's going to show you where all your money is going. Okay, so okay. you can link up your car there, I'll tell you how much your car is worth. Oh, I see, I see. You can link up, um, again, all of those student loans so you'll know where all your budget's going. Okay. And then what I love about it is for accounting reasons. Mm -hmm. So you can type in at the end of the year, mm -hmm. TJ Maxx or clothes, and it'll tell you exactly how much you spent mm -hmm. on your clothes budget, how much you spent on wow. travel, how mm -hmm. much you spent on okay. any sort of single category. Okay, okay. Um, the benefit again of that is that you're going to know exactly where your money's going. You're also going to be able to set a budget mm -hmm. for each month, mm -hmm. so you can keep yourself accountable to what you're spending. I see. Mm -hmm. How much did you pay off every month? Like, how much did you like push yourself to? Do? So I pushed myself to do 150 more than whatever was was requested for the payment. I see. Okay. What I also did is I made the normal payment per month. So let's say it was $200. Mm -hmm. Did the $200 payment plus I would do an extra payment of 150. I see. Because part of your loan and your credit score is going to be looking at how many on-time payments you make, but how many consistent payments you make too. So by doing that extra payment and not just adding in, not doing a total of 350, but doing 250, you know, plus a, a hundred, it's going to allow you to have more incidences of you paying. That makes sense. Oh, okay. So they so, count this and that. So it's right. Like, so they're oh, they're shit. putting they're saying, oh my gosh, she's paying two payments mm -hmm. a month mm -hmm. versus just one large. Oh my, amazing tip. I so it's know gonna that. it's gonna increase your score more I because they look at how many times you're paying. I love mm -hmm. it. I love they it. also look at your credit utilization. Mm. So and if you have federal loans, those aren't going to hurt you as bad as a private loan is mm. going to. So. In my opinion, you should pay off your private loans first before you're paying off your federal. Your mm -hmm. federal loans tend to be a lower interest rate anyway. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when doing this, the snowball effect. I see. Mm -hmm. So you look at, I mean, everything has a different interest rate. And mm -hmm. let's say one is like at 7% versus one at 6%. Right. Then maybe the 7% makes a little bit more sense just because it's private first of all. Right less leniency than government and also 7%, you know, it might be a 1% difference. Right. But if you do the math every year, that's like a whole vacation fee that exactly. you, know, you could have had for yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like 1% doesn't seem like anything. And, you know, I look at all the things like, you know, investment and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they say that, you know, 0.2% can make a difference as well. Right. Just because over time, again, like mm -hmm. accumulate and this is compounded as well, right? Right. Yep. It's like 90, the next day, I mean, the next year, let's say is 99 and mm -hmm. all that. It keeps growing at that rate. So yeah. it's like a snowball. Right. Warren Buffett said the biggest mystery on earth is uh, the compounding effect. In a yes. good way, though. If mm -hmm. you save money, that means it's going to go up like this. But if you have debt, it's going to blow up like that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome.